the Wasatch Mountains at 7,000 feet. But Mario Capecchi isn't hiking, he's commuting. Well, here's the house, just around this corner. I think it's good to have a little bit rough. I mean, I think sometimes we're a little bit too polished. Uh, and I think uh, and we, we, this sort of humbles you, grounds you. I think that makes you a better scientist. He would know. Mario Capecchi won the Nobel Prize for one of the most far-reaching breakthroughs in disease fighting. But to UCSF Nobelist Mike Bishop, his longtime friend Mario is an extraordinary scientist and more. His life story is, is a testimony to the resilience and, and power of the human spirit. It's just uh, truly inspiring. Mario was born in these mountains in Italy on the eve of World War II. The Gestapo shipped his single mother to Dachau, leaving four-year-old Mario to wander Italy for five years. Shelter was actually fairly easy because there were a lot of bombed out houses. We went into garbage pans, as, you know, and stole lots of food, and nothing was ever cooked. I mean, I never had a cooked meal. I've, in fact, I remember one cooked meal the whole time I was there. This is a picture of uh, my mother, and this is taken when she was about eight. And the Miraculously, Mario's mother survived Dachau, found Mario, and left for America. The adjustment was tough. This photo on arrival hides a forehead bruise. Mario had just beaten up another school bully. But now his life was this Pennsylvania commune, Quaker schools, and a scientist uncle. And Mario thrived. Soon he was working in the Harvard lab of Nobelist James Watson in an exciting new field, molecular biology. And what I learned from him was, you know, to Pick big problems. I mean, it takes just as much effort to work on a little problem as is a big problem. But faced with a secure future at Harvard, Mario made a stunning turn to the University of Utah, seeking wide open spaces and science. Now using mice, Mario sought a way to target a specific gene and study its role. His idea was denied federal funding, but Mario gambled diverting four years of funds from his other projects. So if four years later we didn't have a result, we would be in deep trouble. But step by step, Mario showed how to target any gene in a mouse and then replace the gene or knock it out and study the effect that that had on the mouse. This gene targeting gave scientists a way to find and potentially fix the genes behind any genetic disease. To coin a phrase, what Mario did was an absolute knockout. MIT's Rudolf Jänisch has known Mario for 30 years and is himself a pioneer in this field. It was a breakthrough. It changed how we could study animal development and how we could study diseases, human diseases. That just transformed the field and uh, the technology spread like wildfire. And Mario Capecchi won the Nobel Prize. Today, his gene-targeting technology is used by disease researchers worldwide, and he uses it himself to research, among other things, childhood cancers. Oh, that would be terrific. Yes, yes, that is. He's become legendary among scientists for determination and integrity, the first learned in the war, the other from the Quakers. And maybe since he's a dad, he never misses a chance to excite school kids about science. Uh, this is actually the gold medal uh, from Stockholm, and the kids love to look at it and handle it. Hopefully in the future they'll also win one. Before we leave Mario to his brainstorming, whatever happened to those people who denied his idea federal funding? They also had a uh, sense of humor about it. They retorted. And the pink sheet at the beginning said, oh, we're glad you didn't follow our advice. <laughs>